for Mr. Brett Brown and Kurt S. Um, this is a council tool Baltimore Jersey rail splitter and I said that I would talk about or show uh, the controversial and maybe unbelievable uh, truing of this head if you will. So in my studies I've never used this particular pattern uh, but what I'm hearing is that it some people say it's thin, and but compared to a date, and it throws chips well. You see the swirl pattern on the bit. Uh, these are not a hard to move with a stone, and by that I mean by hand. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate some of that. I use aluminum zirconium stones and expensive stones. So if you look out the end of the axe handle here, we have a big piece of ceramic tile. And that's for truing stones. This is for polishing toilets. And if you go to your local hardware store, this is very lightweight. This is like a pumice stone. And very lightweight and it's, it's aggressive, but it doesn't last long. They're inexpensive, two or three dollars. This is, this is just an aluminum oxide stone. It has not been trued. And I use it like that. You can trim them. You don't have to. One side's coarse. One side is medium. And here's what one looks like when it's brand new. So I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, I use a circular pattern. I lay the, the handle up on my shoulder. Like that right there. And I'm holding the head with gloves gloves on both hands and I do a circular pattern wax on wax off one direction then the other like that and then reverse it of your strokes and periodically test your edge. Uh, switch shoulders, switch hands. You don't have to do it this way. I'll show you another method in just a minute. So you can do that. You can also do it like this and just switch, switch the axe around like that. So I'll get back up here where I can see. So these heads, uh, I'm not changing. Uh, profiles. I do not have a gauge uh, and I'll sharpen this if I find that it sticks too much. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that but to steepen, steepen the angle out here but that's not going to do anything. The axe is what it is. If I find that it doesn't penetrate well enough however I'll take these cheeks down with the stone. Uh, you can still see the factory machine marks in this grind uh, it's not polished at all, but you see up in here, it begins to be a very much uh, smoothed out compared to the factory machine, and then you can feel the edge on it. It's very sharp. Now, this being soft, uh, council tools in general uh, versus a vintage head, it will not hold an edge as long, which means more sharpening. Uh, as to the truing of the stones, uh, after a while these will be curved or dished out. You run them back and forth like that and it trues the stone. But back to what we were talking about. Uh, 
four or five notches on a log, on a big log, and you're back sharpening. Uh, with a vintage axe, you may notch an entire log and not have to sharpen it. Uh, but I like to keep a sharp axe, and that's the controversial thing uh, about it. Uh, people say that you don't have to have a stone sharpened edge, a filed edge is best, and that may be true, but I prefer the stone, and it's it's easy, it's available, it can be left outdoors, it does not rust. Uh, I do have power tools, I have multiple four inch and four and a half inch disc grinders, belt sanders, things of that nature. But I found that if you use those tools, uh, you'll, you'll overheat the bit, possibly, and you can get in trouble quickly. Not to say that it's wrong or it's right, but uh, my method was asked to be demonstrated. Uh, and you can do some serious sharpening with these stones, and I'm doing it dry, not wet. And these things, they erode quickly, the stones do. to the cost. These can be bought for uh, less than five dollars and as I like to say you can saturate the area with them. That being you can have one uh, in your shop, one in the woods where you normally chop, one in the truck, one in the house. I mean saturate the area that way you don't lose it. <laughs> but uh, this method works and it works well. Um, Hope you can see. There you can, right there. You can start to see the the blending out in here is is much better than the factory edge. You can see the factory grain in the metal somewhat. But that's my method, and uh, it's cheap. It's easy. Thank you for watching.